In this lecture, I am going to show you how to calculate moment of inertia of a continuous mass distribution. As an example of this, I am considering simplest of its kind, a graph of length L and mass L. Okay, so its length is L and its mass is L. As a convention, I'm considering an axis which is perpendicular to the length of the rod and passing through the center of the rod. This is called centroidal axis. Generally, I used to represent it by I. I wanted to calculate what is the moment of inertia of this display with respect to this axis. For this purpose, for a continuous mass distribution, we know the expression. What is the moment of inertia of a continuous mass distribution? I is equal to summation over R square into dm, where dm is the mass element under the consideration. So, with respect to this axis, let me call at a distance x, at a distance of x, consider a small strip of thickness dx. This is a small strip, its thickness I am taking as dx. So here I am going to define a parameter lambda, which is known as linear density. That is dm divided by dx. So if you integrate it, alternatively you can write it as mass by theta. So first I am calculating what is the moment of inertia of this strip with respect to this axis. For an elemental mass, how can you write it? Moment of inertia, I is equal to summation over the distance of the strip from the axis of rotation is x because of its axis square into dm. From this expression, dm is equal to what you can write? I will first of all write it as dm only. So let us use this expression into this one. That is equal to summation of x square into what is dm here? Lambda dx. Lambda equal to dx. Here I consider a uniform rod. So its linear density is constant. If it is variable, you can't put it outside the integration. As I assumed that it is a uniform mass density. So you can put it outside the integration. Summation of our x squared dx. Next, the problem is how to consider the limit of integration. For this right side portion, if you want to move from here to here, this mass elements you should keep on arranging one after the another. X is equal to zero to L by T. So that only I am doing here from x is equal to 0 to L by 2. As right side and left side both are symmetric, I am multiplying it by K. Or alternatively, you can write it as lambda into summation over. If you take this as origin, okay, the value of x should change from left side, this is minus L by 2, and right side it is plus L by 2. So alternatively, you can write it as minus L by 2 to plus L by 2 x square x. Whether you carry out integration process this or this way, both the ways you are going to get same answer. That is equal to lambda into integration of x square with respect to x is how much? x cube divided by within the limits 0 to L by 2. That is equal to 2 into what is lambda here from this definition? m divided by l into this 3 also I am putting it outside. Now substitute in the place of x l by 2. When you substitute upper limit, it will become l cube divided by 2 cube is how much? 8. Minus if you substitute 0, anyhow it will become 0. So I'm not writing it here. That is equal to how much you're going to get here? 2 4 za, 4 3 za, 12. LL gets cancelled. So M L square divided by 12. Therefore, moment of inertia of this rod with respect to its centroidal axis, which is perpendicular to the length of the rod is given by IG is equal to M L square divided by 12. This is the expression for moment of inertia of rod with respect to this centroidal axis. What if the axis of rotation that I'm going to consider is passing through one of its end and perpendicular to the length of the In this case, how to measure the moment of inertia? In this case also, the analysis is same only. So 
from here you will be considered you will consider at a distance of x a small strip that is up to here every this step everything is as it is that is i is equal to summation over x square lambda dx but only thing that changes here is limit of integration because this is my axis of rotation so the strip x value will change from x is equal to 0 to by the time you reach this end it will be it will become x 0 to f that is equal to as usual as lambda is constant pull it outside the integration summation over 0 to l x square dx this you can write it as lambda is uh, here write it as it is integration of x square is x cube divided by 3 but remember when it's 0 to l this you can write it as what is lambda m by l mass per unit m divided by l into this if you substitute so it will be L cube divided by this L L gets cancelled. You will be getting M L square divided by this is the moment of inertia of the star with respect to one of its ends. Let me call it as this axis. I call, let me call it as I. No, this is I. This is the expression for I. So this is the expression for moment of inertia of the star with respect to one of its ends. The same content you can elaborate it even to a rectangular plate. Let me call this is a rectangular plate. Of length L, its length I am considering as L, breadth I am considering as, let me call it as small L. And breadth I am considering is small L. So if you want to consider an axis which is perpendicular to the frame and lying in the plane of the frame and passing through its center of mass. So this you're gonna get as I, let me call this axis as I A passing through the center and perpendicular to the length. So for this dimension, it is nothing but it, it is looking like rod only because of which I A here you can write as M L square divided by whatever we got here. So with respect, if you wanted it with respect to an axis that is this horizontal axis passing through the center of mass and lying in the plane of this rectangular frame, you can treat it as, let me call it as IB. This you can write it as similarly IB. So in which direction you should look at it? In vertical direction. Divided its dimension is B. So you simply replace it by, L replace it with MB squared divided by squared. In the same way, if you wanted to measure it with respect to one of its endpoints like this, that is, one of its sides like this, this axis, that is perpendicular to the length of this rectangle frame, passing through one of its ends like this. Let me call it as I A dash. Then I A dash. How you can write it as? Same concept I am elaborating. So with respect to one of the endpoints, it is ML square divided by three. In the same way, you can write it as M L square divided by three only. And one of its endpoints like this, this horizontal side. Let me call it as IB dash. Then IB dash is equal to MB square divided by. So same content we have written over here. Now my question is, what is the moment of inertia with respect to an axis perpendicular to the frame of this rectangular uh, frame and passing through the center that is the intersection of uh, IB and IA and perpendicular to this one. How to calculate? For that purpose, we can use another technique that is called perpendicular axis of theory that I am going to be discussing in the next lecture.